Yeah, when something raised to a power, it's called an indices. Now, the fact of the matter is that there are different things that you can do to an index. It's very, very, very simple. This is the easiest thing in a mathematics. Once I get it, simple. So in indices, you have certain laws. When you multiply an index, you simply add the indices. So x to the 6th power times x to the 7th power is equal x to the 6th plus 7 equal x to the 13th power. See that? y square times y to the 3 times y to the 4 times y to the 5 equal to y to the 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 equal y to the 14th power. Everybody see that? x x to the third power plus y to the fourth power equal x to the third power plus y to the fourth power. The only way you can add the index is if the base is the same. You understand that? Yes, sir. So therefore, x and y don't work out. You get that? So times, sorry. Sorry, this will be time. Times. So it's going to equal to x3, y4. Everybody understand that? Yes, Good. When you're dividing, x to the fifth power divided by x squared equal to, you simply minus, which is the opposite of when you multiply. So when you multiply, where do? You add the indices. When you divide, you do what? The opposite of that, you divide, you take away. Equal x to the 5 minus 2. Equal x3. x to the third power. Therefore, y to the 6th over y to the 5 is equal to y to the 6 divided by y to the 5. Isn't that what this means? Therefore, it is equal to y to the 6 minus 5 equal y to the 1 equal y. If you write y to the 1, you look down. Anything to the first power is the same thing. Because it is times itself, no time. You understand? Good. Now, suppose I said to you, therefore, A to the third times A to the fourth times a to the eighth all over a to the fifth times a to the seventh. It really implies I could do above the line and below the line. But because we just know what it is, we just say equal to a to the three plus four plus eight over a to the 5 plus 7, you see it? Just do it one time. But I could work above the line, then work below the line, and then say it can be rewritten. Are you understanding? It implies A to the 8 and 4, 12 and 3, 15, over A to the 5, that's a 12. This implies A to the 15 divided by A to the 12, which implies... A to the 15 minus 12. 
a and s equal a to the third. Everybody understand that? Good. So it's simple. What? I know. All right, ready now. Um, when you raise something to a power, 3x, you call that all squared. Now, when you say something is all squared, it means that both things inside it get the square. So it implies 3 square x square, which implies 9 x squared. See that? All right. Suppose we say a squared b cube c4 c4 a bam rise up to all squared. Now, what happened here, look here so again. What happened here is that 3x is actually equal 3 to the first power, x to the first power. You see that? You just don't write to the first power because it makes back itself. So 3x all squared is equal 3 to the first power x to the first power, all squared. You see that? Which is equal to 3 to the 1 times 2, um, x to the 1 times 2, which equal to 3 square, x square, which equal to 9x square. You see that? So that means, therefore, that right here, so, A square B cube C4 all squared is equal A to the 2 times 2, B to the 3 times 2, and C to the 4 times 2. You see that? Everybody see that? Yes, sir. Which equal A4 B6 C8. ANS. A4 equal A4, B6, C8. See that? Yes, sir. 3M cube over 5N squared All squared. By the way, even though all of the example m so far equal all squared, it can be all cubed, all to the fourth power, all to the any power at all. You understand? Same principle. So we come so now, three, this is implies three to the one, m to the three, over five to the one, n to the two, all squared. Which implies 3 to the 1 times 2, m to the 3 times 2, over 5 to the 1 times 2, n to the 2 times 2. This implies 3 square m6, 5 square, n4. This implies 9 m6, 25 n to the 4, a n s equal 9 m to the 6th power, 25 n to the 4th power. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Huh? 
Now you realize you don't leave the numbers to any power. You work it out to what it must be. You understand that? Good. All right. What if there's a negative index? Yes. Watch the DVD. A to the minus 1 as an index is equal to 1 over A. See that? What does it look like to you? So that means if I say 1 over 2 is actually equal to 2 to the minus 1. See that? See that? You know, see how some seem to? Wait, wait, no man. 5x to the minus 3. Equal to 5. This implies 5 times x to the minus 3. See that? This implies 5 times 1 over x to the 3. You see that? Look here. x to the minus 3. All they do, you say it's equal to x to the 3, take out the minus, and put 1 over it. You see it? Everybody see that? B to the minus 4. What do you say? Equal B to the 4. 1 over it. You understand? So that means, say, this implies 5 over 1 times 1 over x to the 3. What does that look like to you? Fraction. That means, say, that that could be equal to a Huh? That would be equal to a. This implies 5 times 1 over 1 times x to the 3. Which implies 5 over x to the third power. A and S equal 5 over x to the third power. Everybody understand? Very simple, very, very simple. All right, now. Got this one here. You're not going to tell me what to do for this one. A square, B to the minus 2, C to the minus 3. A square, B to the minus 2, C to the minus 3. This implies A square times B to the minus 2 times C to the minus 3. This implies A square over 1 times 1 over b square times 1 over c cube. Because if this is b to the minus 2, so it is have to be 1 over b square. And this is c to the minus 3, so it have to be 1 over c cube. See that? This implies a square times 1 times 1 over 1 times b square times c cube. What that look like? A fraction. 
a square over b square c cube. Is that easy? How people feel maths in a CXC? This always coming up. Like this coming like common in chance. When time you get three square and a circle and the marks are which one different. No people feel the same way, you know? Then time me a little boy. Do what? Art can't start beating if you know you do. When you know you do, art can't start beating. When you know you do, you You think and I am prepared. You ready? But now I'm practice. Now I'm practice, you know what maths me do? To the 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock a man in the States, I do my maths then. If you may start change up the number then, I don't know the book. Try to change up some different thing. All right, when you have a fractional indices, once you see a fraction, it implies a root. So if I see a fraction, you just draw your root sign. The number below the line, the denominator, is going to go in the V, and the other one remains with the X. See that? Done. Fractional indices. From you see a fraction, it implies a root. This is not square root, you know. This is just root. You just put two in it, square root. Because it's the most often used sometimes, and just leave it so. You see? So now the root. The denominator go in the V. And the numerator stay with the whatever the variable is. See that? No. A to the R. It implies root 2 a to the 1, which implies. You see that? A and S, bang. Yeah, I can look at two marks. That, no, that must be coming out. Multiple choice. The part there. But this coming out of the regular paper all the time. A, B, to the three quarter. Oh, yo. What me say about that talking? This implies A times B to the three quarter. So if you realize A don't have no nothing to no three quarter. You know see that? If you put A, B and that, you're wrong. Yes. So you come now and say then it is included then to. This implies therefore A times root 4B cube. Implies A root 4 b cube. Want to see that? If when it comes and say it's equal to root 4 a b cube, it is wrong. Because if this have nothing to do with the a. No, if it was like this now, a b all raised to three quarter. You see that? Because it would be A to the one, B to the one, three quarter, which is A to the three quarter, one times three quarter, 
B to the 1 times 3 quarter. A to the 3 quarter. B to the 3 quarter. You see that? So if you do 1, now it comes and say bang. A cube fourth power times B fourth power cube. And you could have factorized this and get back. Fourth power A B R cube. Now if you put A B cube, then there's nothing for this. So therefore more and work it out so. You see? Less mistake. See that? Well, that equal as a as a index. But I equal as an index. Uh, square root 64a to the 6 implies that the square root everything under here. So is that true? Is that true? Yeah? Now, when something is brought to the root, then it means that 6, 4, A6 was raised to the R. Work out this. What me do study? When you get something to a fractional index, where do you know draw your root? You then carry everything. And you put this below the line and you raise everything to the first power. Because two is below the line. The denominator going the root. See that? If you work so, you can work back so. Watch this. X to the half. When you have a fraction an index, what do you do? You write your root, you put the denominator, and you carry the other thing. So if I say for write this as an index, then once I say this as an index, I know say it must be a fraction. You see? This is x to the 1, so I carry this up here, sir. And the 2 come from here, so go there, sir. You see that? You see that? Yes, sir. All right, good. No. Them gear this is more than one thing. But the fact that all of it under it, it meant that it was all raised to the power. You see it? If it wasn't all raised to the power, then one of them would not be under it. For example, A, B to the half equal to A times B to the half equal to A, B. 
because it wasn't all raised to the power. Now, AB to the half equal root AB to the 1 equal root AB. See that? So once all of it is under the line, it suggests that it was all raised to a power. You see that? So all of this was raised to a power 1 because only 1 gives you back it as itself. See that? So therefore, all of this was raised to the power 1 numerator and it is rooted to 2 the denominator. If this was 3, this would be 3. You see that? Everybody see that? All right. So that means that now, this implies 64 times a to the 6, not true? Yes, sir. All raised to the half, not true? Yes, not true? Which implies 64 to the half times... Times half You see that? Everybody see that? This implies sixty-four to the half times eight to the three. You see that? Sixty-four to the half can be done two ways. The first way. Root 64, 2 times a to the 3 equal to a, 8, a to the 3. a n s equal 8, a to the 3. See that? Or, we could have do it this way. 64 to the half, a to the 3, implies 8 square to the half, a to the 3. You see that? Because 64 is 8 square. Let me see why I never study them thing. I know them thing there. So that implies, therefore, that 8, 2 times 1 over 2 a to the 3 implies 8 to the 1. A to the 3 implies 8 A to the 3. See that? Everybody see that? 64, a 8 square. You see? Huh? Oh, we get the 8 here, so. 64 is 8 square. And therefore, 8 square to the half. You see? Good. Where? Because it's a square root. Once there's, no, once there's nothing in this V, it's square root, which is the most often used. Every other thing puts something in the V. So either coming like or you don't write 1x, you don't really write square root. You get what I mean? So now if you come and put 3, cube root. You understand? So you know it's 2 if nothing is in it. Everybody understand? Good. Zero index. Soon. Anything raised to the power of zero is equal to one. Huh? Anything one or raised to the zero? Sixty equal one. What else? Anything. Equal one. Now suppose me write anything 
to the zero. It would be equal to N -E T H I N. Oh, you know that. Because it would be equal to, in mathematics, anything equal A times N times Y times T times H times I times N times G, which implies that anything to the zero equal to A times A to the 1, N to the 1, times Y to the 1, times T to the 1, times H to the 1, times I to the 1, times N to the 1, times G to the 0. You see? Which means, say, that be A, N, Y, T, H, I, N, times 1. You see that? Those logics. So that's why when we say anything to the zero, it's half a day in the bracket. For all of them equal one. All things raised to zero. See that? One over three to the minus four. Could you be one of my friends? What that mean? When you see a negative index, what happened? What? That's fractional index. When you see a negative index, you put the thing, one to the third, raised to the power, and you put one over it. When you see a negative no one over the thing. X to the negative 4. No equal to 1 over X to the 4. In this case, X is 1 third. So it is equal to 1 over 1 third to the 4. You know, see? Say it simple. You say it simple. So therefore, one third to the negative four. When you see that like them, you know, you just put it as x. You see? To make it easy for work out. In a rough work. So therefore, x to the negative four equal one over x to the four, and x is one third, so therefore it's one over one third to the four. You see that? You know, finish it. Because one over one third to the four is equal to one over one to the four, 1 times, because it's a 1 to the 1 and 3 to the 1, over 3, 1 times 4. It implies 1 over 1 to any power is 1. 3 to the 4th power. 3, 3 is 9, 3, 9 is 27, 3 times 27, 8 to 1. Now what does that look like to you? Fraction. It looks like it's saying 1 divided by 1 over 81. You know, see that? This implies 1 over 1 times reciprocal 81 over 1, which implies 1 times 81 over 1 times 1, which implies 81 over 1, ANS equal 81. You see that? Look, one third, all to the fourth power, which means I multiply everything in the bracket to the fourth power. So one to the one times four, and three to the one times four. That is give you three to the fourth power. Three to the fourth power is eight to one. Because 1 to the 1, yeah? Yeah, but 1 to the 4th power is 1. 1 to the 4th power equal 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. 
One to, eh. No, no, no. Up here, so. One time, one to the one times four. You see it? We should give you one over one to the fourth power over three to the fourth power. You see? Which will give you one over one over 81. Which implies one divided by one over 81. Four to the five over two. What is now? Fractional indices. So this implies root 4 to the 5th power. See that? 2. This implies 4 to the 5th power. I don't know if you're using a calculator to do that yet. Huh? How much? I doubt that. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Oh, to the 5th. One more. Okay. How much did you say? 1024? Yes, Square root that. How much? 32. 32. Alright, I'm showing you something now. Sweet and dandy. ANS equals 32, though. I'll show you simple now. Four. No, I've put nine on a bracket because that was four. Four to the five over. Four to the five over two. Watch all the simple. Implies two square to the five over two. Not sure. Because four is two square. This implies. 2 squared times 5 over 2, not true. Which is 2 over 1, not true. This implies 2, 1 times 5 over 1 times 1. This implies 2 to the 5th power. 2 to the 5th power. See that? Say it simple. <laughs> Watch this now. I will reach. All right, what is imply? When you see this, what it imply as an index? What square root imply? Once you see root, you know so everything inside is raised to a fraction. So therefore, this implies that it is 9x squared all raised to the half. You know see that? No, look at how simple this is. This implies that it is 3 squared x squared all raised to the half. Which implies 3 squared times half times x squared times half. Which implies 3 to the 1 times x to the 1. Which implies 3x.
a n s equal three x. Whoa. Find the value of root p over q when p equal 64 to the two third and q equal 3 to the minus 2. That's using the logics. Square root P over Q implies P over Q to the half. Is that correct? Square root P over Q. Where P equal 64 and 2 thirds and Q equal 3 to the minus half. Not true. This implies 64 to the 2 third over 3 to the minus half to the half. Everybody with me there? Yes, sir. Bolo. Call Bolo beside the shower blows. Eyes on the bone. You yeah, count up your count your dollar number. See in there? Oh. You. Yeah. Bolo. <laughs> <laughs> so, come now. This implies 64 to the 2 third times half eh? over 3 to the minus 2 times half. Everybody see that? This implies 64 to the 1 third. See that? See that? 64 to the 1 third. This work out to 1 third. See that? 2 over 3 times 1 over 2. 2 cancel 2, 2. Then there comes a 1 times 1 over 3 times 1 equal 1 over 3. See that? Over negative 2 times a half, which is negative 2 over 1. That comes to that. That negative 1 times 1 over 1 times 1 equal negative 1 over 1 equal negative 1. So equal 3 to the negative 1. You see that? So we get rid of the bracket now. So we come to now and say, this implies what to the third power can give me 64? Four, four, sixteen. Try four to the third power. See, and I've learned them something there. Sixty-four is what square? Eight square equals sixty-four. Not you. Come now. So we want 4 cube. You see that? To the 1 third. 4 cube being 64. 
You see that? Over 3 to the minus 1. You see that? Everybody see that? This implies 4 cube times 1 third over 3 to the minus 1. You see that? Everybody see that? Everybody see that? This implies 4 to the 1. How oh, many? 3 times 1 over 3. to the 1 over 3 to the minus 1. See that? This implies 4 over 1 over 3. Anything raised to the negative, where do? You put it to the power and put 1 over it. But since 3 to the first power is 3, me leave it. You see that? So then now, what does this imply? This implies 4 divided by 1 over 3, not true. So this implies 4 times 3 over 1, not true. Being 4 over 1, this implies 12 over 1, ANS equals 12. You see that? I should know how I want to know do it now. This is how I want to do it. Come here, sir. Now. Square root PQ over Q implies P over Q. All raised to the half power. True or lie? Good. This implies P to the 1 times a half over Q to the 1 times a half. Am I correct? Huh? Yes. Because you're going to multiply everything in here by the power. This, this implies P to the half over Q to the half. Everybody see that? Where P equal 64 over 2 thirds, to the 2 thirds, sorry. And Q equal 3 to the minus 2. What more have to say now? Find, finding P. P to the half, sorry, P to the half. We're finding P to the half. This we are finding, eh? P to the half. No, P we are finding. P equal 64 and two thirds. No, I'm going do something wrong. Oh, sorry. Ah! Working above the line. P to the half equal 64 and 2 third to the half. Equal to 64 and 2 third times a half. Equal 64 to the 1 over 3. Where 
64 equal 4 to the third power. This implies that 4 to the third power raised to the, make sure you don't write it like a, raised to the one third implies 4 to the 3 times 1 over 3. This implies 4 to the 1 over 1. This implies 4. See that? Working below the line. It's not a hard way, this is just a long way. Long way and hard way is different thing. Working below the line. Q to the half equal to 3 to the minus 2 to the half. This implies 3 to the minus 2 times 1 over 2 equal 3 to the minus 1. Therefore, this is not an equation. This is a... Um, can't remember the word, so I'm going to say equation. Equation can be rewritten, W-R-I-T-T-E-N. Sorry, this don't finish. This implies one-third. Can be rewritten four over one-third. This implies four divided by one over three. This implies 4 times 3 over 1 equal 12. ANS equal 12. See that? So I'm going to go one now. Exactly so I want to. Mm -hmm. All right, $100 for the one here. Yeah. Yeah. Five to the two x plus three equal one twenty five to the x plus five. Find x. This implies that five to the two x plus three equal you want to change this to equal the same type of base. Can 25 be changed to base 5? What is it? 5 to the third power. See that? See that? You. See that? Everybody see that? Because 125 is 5 to the third power. See that? You have to multiply this by what is outside to the power. So the fact that it is x plus 5 don't change the fact that you have to multiply 3 by x plus 5. You see that? See that? Everybody see that? 3 times x, 3x, three, 3 times positive 5, 15. Now, if 5 to the 2x plus 3 equals 5 to the 3x plus 5, then it implies that 2x plus 3 must be equal to 3x plus 5. Not true. If 5 to this power 
equal 5 to this power. Then the power there must be equal for it to be equal. Only 5 square can equal 5 square. You see that? No. Them said this. Equal to this. So they're saying that 5 raised to this power is equal to 5 raised to this power. The only way it can be equal, meaning the same as. That's what equal means in mathematics. The only way it can be the same as is if this is the same as this. Since the base is the same as the base. You don't see that? So 2x plus 3 equals 3x plus 5. So 2x plus 3 equals to 3x plus 5. You want to get all of them. So I'm going to take out this and carry over here. So. 2x equal to 3x plus 5 minus 3. 3x minus 2. See that? Carry over the 3x now. 2x plus 2, sorry. Hmm? Plus 2. 5 minus 3, plus 2. 2x minus 3x, because it's that positive, equal to minus x equal to x equal to 2 over minus 1. How do we get minus 1 here? Because minus x is minus 1 times x. x equal minus 2. A N S x equal minus 2. Fifty. How are you there? A fifteen? Oh, so this a fifteen, and this a fifteen. So fifteen minus three. Twelve. Twelve. Negative twelve. Because you have to multiply 3 times x and 3 times 5. So that would be 3 times, this is 15, 15. 15, 15, 12, 12, 12, 12, minus 12. Hmm. 3 to the power 2p minus 1. To the power, yeah, 2p. Why? <laughs> 2p minus 1. Yes. Equal to 34. Nobody wants to be alone. All right, phone time. So what you're going to say now? You're going to say 243. Type that in your calculator. 243. You divide it by 3. Huh? How much that? Divide it by 3. Divide it by three. Divide it by three. Divide it by three. So when this and this are the same, you add up this. One, two, three, four, five. That's the fifth power. You realize I don't put no night up? You see that? No. Look on the first one, what would you do? 125. We want to get it to base five. Divided by 5. Divided by 5. Divided by 5. 1. See that? 
Anyhow it have remainder, if it don't reach to one, then it can be a power. You see that? Everybody needs a... So therefore, 3 to the 2p minus 1 is equal to 3 to the 5th power. If 3 to the 2p minus 1 equal 3 to the 5th power, then if this is the same as this, then this must be the same as this. In mathematics, the same mean equal. So 2p minus 1 must be the same equal to 5. That means that 2p equal to 5 plus 1. That means that 2p equal to 6. That means that p equal to 6 divided by 2. That means that p equal to a and s. P equal 3. Simple. Mm -hmm.